Hey guys, my name is Ben Howard and today we're out here at Flat Rock Middle School to take a look at the two newest distance drivers from Discraft. We've got the Captain's Thrasher and the Drive. Main reason I want to take a look at these two today is because obviously they're the newest discs from Discraft, but as you can also tell from the flight numbers, these are really similar discs. And if I put them up side by side, I'd be curious to see if you can actually tell any difference between these two at all. It's like they really, I really don't notice any difference. The only thing I do notice in the hand at least is the captain's thrasher feels like it has like a big pop top kind of but it, it doesn't like you can kind of hear it popping but it really doesn't so it, it just kind of has like a really deep kind of feel it doesn't feel bad in any way it just feels different just a little different and then for the drive it doesn't have that same depth it feels very shallow in the hand and as also as you can tell it's 11 speed so it's going to have like a little bit more of a smaller hand feel so I figured I'd bring them out here to pretty much, I would say, one of the, if not the longest layouts in our area. And just try and throw some bombs with these things and see how far they fly, how they compare to each other in the air, stuff like that. But, um, yeah, pretty much everything. So let's go and get into it. All right, guys, so for hole one, we've got a par three, 320 feet. You can see the basket straight ahead between the rocks that are straight in front of us. Biggest thing to pay attention to is the baseball field on the, to the left is out of bounds. And this white pole right here is a mando to the right. So main thing is we really just got to make sure we give these some Anheuser out of the hand. Give them a good amount of height. Because the main mistake we can make is just giving these things too much height. Get them nose up and having them fade out in the baseball field. Um, Let's see. We'll let the Captain's Thrasher go first, I guess. Uh, okay. I thought that was too much, but... I think that'll be really good. I'm glad I gave it, that's the thing, I want to give it too much Anheuser if I do anything. The drive, I don't think will hold up to that much Anheuser though, so I'm going to throw it a little bit flatter. Yeah, and it, uh, it kind of came out of it, but it never really fought back and was moving left. It just kind of held that line, it was slowly moving right. Okay, so they ended up almost on top of each other. Drives right here, Captain's Thrasher's right here. Both of them just on the edge of circle two, edge of circle, two, edge of circle one. Let's see if we can go ahead and get a birdie out of one of these two. Ah, oh, pulled it. Oh, gosh, I pulled that one too. Well, now I get to do a rock putt at least. All right, guys, we're on hole two. This one's a par three, 500 feet. You can see the basket straight ahead. Biggest thing to pay attention to is obviously there's a bunch of rough off to the right, but the road on the left places OB, and that's gonna be the main danger on this hole because as you can tell, we're throwing from elevated tee box. So if I give this too much height or don't hit my angle just right, it's a pretty good chance I'm gonna go out of bounds left. Especially with the Captain's Thrasher, I don't think the drive I need to worry about too much, but the Captain's Thrasher still has the box. I'm going to give it some Anheuser out of the hand, try and flex it while still giving it enough height so we can get down there. I don't think this is a basket I can get to, but I think we can get in the circle too at least. Oh, I'll get around it. Get around it. Ooh. I don't know if that's circle two or not. I know it was lucky though. Tag gum. Um, let's see. For the drive, I think I'm just going to throw it flat. Just straight at the basket. Oh, yeah. Just get down for the road. Yeah. I feel like that's the same distance for both of them. Maybe the Captain's Thrasher is obviously closer to the basket, but I feel like just pure distance off the tee, I feel like they're pretty close. Okay, so the drive and the and the Captain's Thrasher are literally like the exact same distance away. Like they're in a perfect line. Just the drive's over here on the left side of the fairway and the Thrasher's over there on the right side where it's gonna be maybe like 70 feet from the basket. Not quite in circle two, but I'm just gonna do a little chip forehand with the drive. Get up and down. 
I pulled a little bit, but I think that's good. So, yeah. I guess looking at it from here, it might be 80 feet. I don't know. As y'all know, my internal range finder is not very good. So, I'm going to try and jump put this up there. Don't think I'm actually going to be able to get this basket high or anything, but we can at least get ourselves a manageable putt. There we go. All right, guys, we're on hole three. This one's a par three, 435 feet. Basket's down this way. I think you can see it on camera. But the main thing to worry about is the uh, baseball field on the left, which is out of bounds, and the creek off to the right, which is out of bounds, marked by the tall grass. So the main miss I don't want to make is on the baseball field, because then I got to go figure out how to get in the baseball field, which is always a pain. Um, let's see, still the Thrasher's tee. This one I can just kind of throw to like this, almost at this big tree on the right, to let it fade off of it. A little early, but not in the baseball field. That's all that matters. That's much better. <laughs> Odds are they're gonna like end up on top of each other again, but I, I, the second one felt better. <laughs> so yeah, I was right. <laughs> Almost directly on top of each other. That extra oomph I put into the drive got it two feet farther. But we are like, kind of like on the last hole, edge of circle two, maybe close to 70 feet. See if we can cash a long one. I put that at the basket. That was actually pretty good. Ooh, close. I didn't give that one the Anheuser. I gave the first one. All right, guys, so for hole four, we've got a par three, 429 feet. The basket is on the other side of this group of trees you can see right here. Best gap is this one off to the right side of it. Definitely have to give the Captain Thrasher some Anheuser out of the hand, kind of flex it through this gap. I get past it. No, well, I kind of got through it. Needed it to turn a little bit later or maybe throw just a little bit less Anheuser. But I think this would be a really good shot for the drive. I think I can just pretty much throw it flat or maybe just a touch of Anheuser. Oh, I didn't give it any Anheuser. It still turned though, which is actually pretty, pretty surprising. <sighs> okay, so somehow the drive got like all the way down here. Like, I think I'm actually a little bit closer than the, the thrasher but you can tell we got some a low ceiling to get through the basket's like 20 feet past this tree right here so really just not hitting the leaves and falling straight down is a good play Let's see what we can do oh gosh oops <laughs> about threw that in Oh, man, so close. I didn't think I'd get that big of a skip off the drive because it's it's rained for like the last hour before I got here. So the grass is super wet, so I didn't think it actually skipped that much, but now we're down here. Let's see if we can get up there. Ah, oh, dang it. All right, guys, so we're on hole five. This one's a par three, 350 feet. You can see the basket straight ahead through this gap. We're not gonna be going for that gap. Instead, we're just gonna try and throw it over everything, just give it enough height and power to get past these trees and dump out to the left side. Down there should have like a mid circle two putt, 45, 50 feet-ish. 
Um, I'm kind of tempted to just go straight at it with the drive because the drive feels like it would be perfect for just like a line drive straight at the basket. We'll see how the first shot goes with the thrasher and then we, we might do that. Stay high. Oh yeah, get down, get down quick. That's perfect. That might not even be in circle two. That might be like edge of circle one. I think I can do that same shot with drive. I'm just concerned about it flipping and then going into the stuff on the right. Grand, this thing does have some late stability. So tell you what, instead of doing what we did with the thrasher, instead I'm, I'm gonna aim for the gap, but I'm still gonna go high enough to where I'm gonna go over the trees. Because based off the last hole, I know that even if I do kind of throw it nose up, it's still gonna turn for me. It's still gonna give me a lot of distance. The main thing is just gonna be not throwing it too far, really. But just kind of try and kind of play for the turn and hope, think it, and see if it'll kind of go straight. Oh, I threw it on Heiser. Dang it. I think I, yeah, okay. We're safe. That's definitely like outside of circle two though. Okay, so this is pretty interesting. The drive, even though I threw on Heiser, it went just as far as the, the captain's thrasher. And even though it went through this tree too, it still went just as far and is pin high. Granted, we're like, I don't even know, like a hundred feet out maybe, but I don't even know if I can jump putt this that far, but we'll give it a shot. I kind of want to do that run and jump putt, but not. I'm not trying that for the first time. There we go. It's the closest birdie putt we've had all day. Let's go ahead and make it. Oh, right over the top. Dang it. All right, guys, we're on hole six. This one's a par three, 270 feet. Basket straight ahead between these two trees. Best play on this hole is going to be going to the right side of this tree on the right side of the basket. Uh, main reason for that is because the road on the left is out of bounds. So I'm just going to throw it up there, almost try and hit the school bus. I'm going to be curious to see how these discs fly on this hole because we're going really far uphill. I feel like the drive's not going to be as affected as much as the thrasher. So I think the, the drive, I'm basically just going to throw it at the tree on the right side of the basket and see if it'll turn off of it just a little bit. I pulled it, but yeah, it's, it's, it, it would have been too short, but that, that flew like I thought it was going to. It kind of just held straight, drifted a little bit to the right, and then had a good finish. So for the thrasher, I feel like it's going to go about the same distance as the drive. So I think I'm going to do basically the same thing and see if I can get these, get it to cut in front of the tree on the right and hopefully not go all the way over to the road. We just throw it straight at the basket, but oh, it kind of worked out. Oh yeah, that's basically parked. go finally made a birdie putt all right guys so we're on hole seven this one's a par three 372 feet baskets down this way tucked off to the right i really don't need a lot of left to right movement on the shot if i throw it like pretty much just dead straight kind of hugging the right side that'll put me in like circle two ish it will be like an uphill putt but It'll be at least like, like a makeable putt. So if I can get these to just kind of kind of hold to the right and just kind of just turn over into the side of the hill, we can definitely get up there for a long putt. Uh, drive still got the box. That is so good. I feel like that's going to be really close. Like, I feel like that's going to be like closer to like 40 feet from the basket. 
Let's see if we can do something similar with the thrasher. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit shorter than the drive, but pretty close. I feel like that one's going to be closer to like the 45, 50 foot range. And with it being an uphill putt, probably going to be closer to like 60 feet. But both of those are pretty much what I was looking for off the tee. Just got to give it height to get it there. Oh, man, I thought I made it. Same thing. Got to give it the height to get it there. There we go. All right, guys, we're on hole eight. This one's a par four, 600 feet. So you can see the basket dead straight ahead, all the way up there. Biggest thing to pay attention to is we've got a Mando right of this fence up here. And the wood line on the right isn't OB, but it might as well be OB because it's super easy to lose a disc in there. But main thing I'm really just trying to do off the tee is throw a shot past the short tee and to the right of it, so that way I'm basically almost where this running path is, you can see on the right, but like, you don't wanna go that far because then you're really bringing the, the rough on the right end to play. Like, anything to the left of it is great because it kind of opens up the shot into the green. Because I don't know if you can tell or not, but the, it's an elevated basket that's on top of a hill. So if you're 20 feet short of the basket, it's probably almost like eight foot, 10 foot tall, where, from where you are. So we want to set ourselves up well off the tee so we can have a chance to get up and down for birdie. Drive has still got the box, which is actually a really good disc for this hole. Just gonna throw it flat, kind of at the right, at the right side, because I know this will turn a little bit, but once it gets near the end, it'll fade out pretty hard. Ah, early, didn't get it to turn, but that's far enough to where I've got flat footing and it'll probably be like a 300 foot shot into the green from there. So it's doable. For the captain's thresher, I'm gonna throw it on some Anheuser, basically the same line, just touch Anheuser, hope it comes back. That's really good. Oh, <laughs> no skip in this tall grass at all, but yeah, probably about the same distance, 300 foot shot, but we're gonna have a much easier time getting to the green from the right side. Okay, so from there, y'all can see why I didn't wanna be on this side of the fairway, because like I said, I gotta throw a hyzer at the roof on the right, get it to fade off of it, while still getting enough distance to get up there for a putt, and, but not throwing it too straight to where it goes in the woods. Makes this shot much touchier than it needs to be. I don't know if it shows on camera or not, but this hill on the left, it's very much in the way. So I've got to be really precise with this shot, really careful. I'm glad I'm throwing the drive here because the drive will kind of hold straight even though I'm throwing it in the hyzer. But really, got to be really particular with this shot. Oh, okay. I think we're like 30 feet short of the basket. So we're going to have like a 45 foot putt because of how elevated the basket is. Okay, so from here, you can see why I'd rather be on the right side, fairway, because look how much more open the shot is. Like the hill's not in the way at all. We still have to go slightly uphill, but nowhere near as bad as it is on the left side. And the only real mistake you can make is turning something over or pulling your shot to the right. But that's why I'm glad I'm throwing the captain's thrasher because I can throw this like almost at like the volleyball nets on a little bit of Anheuser, let the Anheuser kind of flatten out, push straight. And the main thing I want to do is be a little bit long in the basket so that way I'm on top of the hill. And I'm only putting on like a regular elevated basket, not like a super elevated basket like if I was short. Still a touchy shot, but much more doable. Ah, nope. Uh, either way, that's a easy par. 
made the good mistake. Okay, so we've got putts from both up shots, but you can also see why <laughs> this is like the tallest basket I've ever played on. Let's see if we can get up there. Oh man, went over it. <laughs> I didn't think I could do that. Ah, oh, okay. I was short anyway. <laughs> Ooh, it's a little high. Just a little high. <laughs> Dang it. I knew it was going to be a little left, and I knew it was going to be close. Ah! Dang it. All right, guys, so we're on hole nine, final hole of the video. This one is, well, I don't know where the T-sign is, but I think it's like 380 feet, uh, par three. But, uh, yeah, it's just straight ahead. Biggest thing to pay attention to is we got to go over this uh, football field that's kind of elevated. So you need to throw the disc just a little bit higher than you would normally throw it, which it's fine because I'm going to have to throw these two on like some big flex shots if I want to get them down there for a putt. I've done it before. It's it's definitely within my reach to get both of these there, but it's going to require like perfect shots basically. Uh, let's see. The drive still has the box. I think that's still short. Not bad. Just, I don't know, if it, probably just a little too high. Granted, that, that uh, drive doesn't have enough bite to really come out of a, a shot with that much Anheuser anyway. So I think if I throw that same line with the Captain's Thrasher, we can get it at least a little bit closer. That felt much better. But yeah, that's that feels like it might have got up there to be like at least circle two, maybe circle one. Maybe. I don't want to go out and say it's in circle one because then I'm gonna look stupid when it's at like 60 feet, but we'll see. Okay, so this is where the drive ended up. So yeah, I see the captain's thrasher. It's it's probably like 20 feet. So definitely got some good distance out of these two. Because I definitely would say it plays closer to like just right at 400, maybe a little bit farther. So the fact that I was able to get both of them inside of circle two is pretty good. But let's see if we can get go ahead and make this putt. Say hi. Yes, there we go. Get in there. Let's go. All right, guys, that finished up the round out here with the Captain's Thrasher and the Drive. I gotta say, these things turned out really nice. A lot better than I was expecting, honestly. Like, I was expecting the, the Captain's Thrasher to be a little bit more stable, but other than that, I figured they were gonna kinda do the same thing. But in reality, these things, you could have both of them in your bag and wouldn't have any overlap at all. These two are almost like a Wraith and Destroyer combo where you've got the Wraith where you've, you've got a distance driver that will give you a lot of distance, but in the air it's going to hold a tight line, not really give you a lot of left to right movement in the air. Because especially you can see that on hole two, like I threw it flat at the basket, gave me a nice drift, came back, and it's still within that like, what, 40, 50 foot fairway. So to have a, a driver that, ha that can get you a good amount of distance and only move like 15, 20 to 30 feet, left to right, right to left, and get you that much distance is really nice. But then with the Captain's Thrasher, you've got the one that's got a little bit more dependable over stability. Gonna go a little bit farther if you throw it on lines like I threw this one on hole nine. And like as these beat up, they're gonna give you that like really big distance line, but they're gonna require more room to give you those big distance line. That's where the Wraith comparison comes in. When it comes to the disc by themselves, the only thing that really stuck out to me was the Captain's Thrasher just has like a really nice amount of glide for how stable it is. 
Like I never really felt like I threw this thing and it was falling out of the sky. I was getting I was getting really good pushing shots out of it. And once it started to run out of energy, it wasn't dumping. It was just kind of slowly turning. So that's really nice to have, especially for those flex lines where you want the disc to kind of just slowly like fade out of the shot throughout the flight. And then the drive, I heard a lot of people comparing this to the Grace, saying it was like you know, a rip off of the Grace. But I really like these because they're kind of like a beat up version of a Grace. Like the Grace I have in my bag, I have to throw really hard and throw it a per almost a perfect shot to get it to turn like this one will. And like this thing, it's it's surprising because it almost has like a fairway driver level of like forgiveness for like nose up angle, stuff like that. Because you can see that on multiple shots, like I was getting the same amount of distance out of these two and I was throwing much worse shots with the drive. So yeah, def I definitely would recommend both of these discs for a lot of people. The only people I wouldn't recommend these to are just like, you know, beginners who don't need distance drivers yet. And even then, like some of them could throw the drive and have it be that reliable, like overstable driver for them, something like that. And it's gonna give them a good amount of distance. So something to think about. Both of these discs are really good. Definitely recommend them to a lot of people. I was originally gonna do a giveaway for this video, but I decided against it because I've done a lot of them lately. And also I wanna keep both of these because I think this is, this is gonna be a backup for my destroyer slot or my straight to overstable distance driver. And this is going to be my replacement for my grace if I ever lose that. So in the future, keep an eye for these because they might be taking up those slots really quick. We'll have to see because I, I definitely wouldn't be opposed to putting them in the bag right now, honestly. But yeah, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you made this far in the video, sorry I didn't do the giveaway, but the next video I'm doing will be doing a giveaway. So stay tuned for that. If you have any ideas for other discs I should check out, please let me know down in the comments. But other than that. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and have a good one.